All right, so today we're going over how to identify and remember the long bones in the body, since those are the kind of bones you'll see on an A&P lab test. So the first long bone we come to if we're working our way down the skeleton is the clavicle, which you can see right here. And the clavicle is just the medical name for the collarbone, so it's kind of easy to remember clavicle, collarbone, using those C's to guide you. For identification purposes, the clavicle to me has always kind of looked like a golf club, and that's how I remember it. So think of golf club and clavicle, club and clavicle. Another thing to point out is that the clavicle is very smooth on its superior part and very rough on the inferior section. So if you end up with a bone that kind of looks like a club or a golf club, and it's smooth on the top and very rough and rigid on the bottom, you probably have a clavicle. So going further into the arm, we have the full arm model here. And as you can see, the first and biggest bone of the arm here is the humerus. And the easiest way to remember the name basically is that it's your funny bone. It's funny, it's humerus. This is the way people have been remembering it for years and I think it works well. The tricky part really is trying to differentiate between the humerus and the femur since they both kind of look similar. They're big bones, they both have a ball joint at the end. So one thing to remember is that the humerus eventually, not directly, connects to the hand, while the femur eventually connects to the foot. Now if you're still not sure what you're dealing with here, so you can take a look at the humerus. If we look closer, kind of the standout part is the trochlea here, and it kind of looks like, to me, a spool of thread. And this is the part where the uh, ulna rotates around. So what I do is I think of the spool of thread, which is very prominent, and I think of sewing. How do you sew? You use your hands. So you know you're in the arm, and the big bone of the arm is the humerus. So moving to the forearm, we have the ulna and the radius. And the way to differentiate between those two is just stick your arm out, give a big thumbs up, and the ulna will be underneath. So think of ulna and underneath. As for the radius, for some reason I think of the thumbs up and I think radical man. That's what happens when you grew up in the 80s. And so I think radical man and I know the radius is closer to the thumb, giving me a big thumbs up. So for identifying the ulna, we just take a look at it. Excuse the plastic outcroppings here from the model, but it basically is like a wrench. It has this U-shaped notch here that connects the humerus. So if you see a U-shaped notch here like a wrench, think U for ulna. For the radius, the radius is memorable and named after this radial head here. So think of, it kind of reminds me of a radial tire, as you can see, rotating around. So think radial tire, radius. Moving into the hand, the metacarpals are the long bones found in the hand, and the tricky thing is remembering the difference between the metacarpals in the hands and the metatarsals in the feet. So one way to remember that is that you drive a car for carpals with your hands, and we step in tar with our feet for metatarsals. Another tricky thing to remember is which are the metacarpals versus the carpals. And so one way to remember that is that Carpals sounds like being in a carpool, and we see that all the bones are squished together like they're in a carpool, and the metacarpals are after. Meta means after or beyond, so the metacarpals are like after the carpool. Everyone went their separate ways, they spread out, and went in their own direction. The phalanges are the names for the fingers and the toes, and I remember this because the phalanges are like the long prongs on a fork. Fork for phalanges. So that covers the upper extremity long bones and we're gonna move into the lower extremity long bones in the next video.